How did Puppet come about? What was the core problem that you were looking to solve? So I had been doing system administration for a long time and then had spent about two years as an independent consultant using existing tools that were out there. And what I used to say is I couldn't make promises to my customers, but the truth is that I couldn't keep the promises I was making. You can make whatever promise you want. Um, but I, I was trying to make sure that what I, the solutions I was delivering to my customers were, would work when I delivered them and also in a year or in two years. Mm. Um, and I couldn't do that with the tools out there. And I found that the tools that were out there were just consistently, they were too hard to use. Some people could use them. The best people, the, the 5,000 best sysadmins in the world could use anything they wanted. And if they didn't like that, they could build their own. But the, for the rest of the world, for the vast majority of people out there who either didn't have the time or the, the skills to create their own solution, or it was, well, that wasn't their business value, right? They needed to provide some higher level value. There was nothing they could use. And so you go to every shop, and every shop does it differently. Everybody was doing it from scratch. And so I said, there's got to be a better way. And I think you know, what I, my idea was that the, the core of that better way was to produce something that was simple enough that anybody could use it, but powerful enough that anybody could use it, that you didn't have to be this very simple, uh, very simple slice of, of company, that if you had real complex infrastructure, you could use Puppet, but that if you didn't have really hard problems, you could also use Puppet. And, and I think it's gonna, done a good job of finding that balance. Now, it models everything as data. Is that correct? Essentially, yeah. So Puppet, the configuration language itself is declarative. So you don't say how you want things to get done. You just say, I want this package installed or the service to be running. And Puppet's job is to figure out how to make sure that's true. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the, you know, really, I, I think the key innovation, well, one of, the, one of the key innovations in Puppet was to build what we call a resource abstraction layer. So when you talk about packages, we support 35 different kinds of packages. So whether you're talking about an RPM or a DEB mm -hmm. or a port, you don't have to, you as the user don't have to care. You just say, look, I want this package installed in Puppet deals with the, with the details. But then at every stage in the game, um, and this is what I'll be talking about in my talk uh, at Velocity, at every stage in the process from the language all the way to getting feedback from the client saying what happened, all the steps in that process are done with data. So it's not like you're sending a 20,000 line Ruby script down to the client. You're sending JSON down to the client and it's easy to do static analysis on that. Any language you want, you can load that JSON up and figure out what resources you're managing, what services you're managing, what files are on disk. Um, that's very easy to get a lot of value out of that. And, and some of our customers have a ton of that data. We've got one customer who just their Puppet infrastructure, not the machines managed by Puppet, but mm -hmm. just Puppet itself, produces 750 gigabytes of data a day. So we are talking that's about- That's just the data. That's the, the configurations, yeah. the facts, the inventory data coming from the clients, the configurations being sent back to the clients, and the reports coming back from those clients when, they, when they're in the process of configuring themselves. At, at what point did you realize it was catching on? What were the signs of that? Um, well, you know, it, there's, there's a point where, there, there was a point at a conference about two or three years ago where the conference of the year before, I had spent all my time trying to, you know, you, you kind of, you do the, have you heard of Puppet? And they yeah. go, no. And you go, yeah. well, have you heard of these competitive products? And most times they also say no, because again, no one uses any tools in this space. You know, e even now, the majority of, uh, when, we, when we go into a shop, we're not replacing something else. We're replacing shell scripts and Perl scripts. That's always been the case. But there was one year where, I went to a conference and, I, and somebody said, well, you know, what is it that you do? And I said, you know, Puppet, have you heard of it? And he goes, no. And I thought about saying, you should use it. And then I thought, you know, you're probably already using it. And I said that to him and his CEO was sitting right next to him. He looks up and goes, yeah, we use it. And he looked back down at the screen. <laughs> so that was kind of a, an indicator that, yeah. you know, we're beginning to, to get, you know, when people you don't know learned about it from people you don't know, who probably learned about it from people you don't know, then that's kind of the, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you've gotten far enough afield from your direct advocacy that it's probably turning into something real. Right. So last question for you. How do you see it evolving over the next couple of years? So my goal with Puppet is that it be, it be, you know, frankly, it, you know, I don't know if this is reasonable or not, but I want it to be on every operating system. I want it to be on every device. I want it to ship with the OS, and I want it to be the standard canonical way that you speak to your infrastructure. I want the, the, the language you use to talk to your infrastructure to be Puppet's language. I want the APIs you use to figure out what's going on with your infrastructure to be Puppet's APIs. I want the data you get saying it, what happened on your infrastructure to be Puppet's data. So to do that, we have to, it always has to get you know, smaller, take fewer resources, be on the one hand more powerful but on the other hand, simpler and more like, you know, more like SMTP, where it's it, it's extremely flexible and very powerful, but not not at the cost of complexity. Um, so it has to do that very well, but it also has to go up the stack to some extent. Um, a lot of what what Puppet does today is it's really good at putting bits on disk, but most people don't have a putting bits on disk problem. They have a how do I manage my application? How do I manage the whole infrastructure? How do I make the whole world do what I want it to do and not have to focus too much on this one machine or this one application or this one data center? And so 
as, as we get uh, you know, even fewer resource requirements, as we get smaller, as we get more stable, we need to add some functionality so that we can get you know, those, those notches up the stack in a way that um, still is simple, still is usable, but gives people the ability to not have to you know, integrate 10,000 different tools or you know, not have to rely on a great tool at one layer of the stack and then still shell scripts and Perl scripts at other layers in the stack, which is what they're, they're doing in large part right now. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you.